and you're listening to That Gets My Goat. Never again. We started again. Ah, oh, apparently. Is it recording this time? I'm pretty sure. It says it's eight seconds in, so. Oh, wow. Longest eight seconds of our lives, kids. <laughs> The bad side where it makes the noises. The dark side, yes. It was just doing static. Mm -hmm. Now it, here, you gotta put it in. Totally sounds like a game of Pong. Okay, I, I can hear a beeping sound. <laughs> sounds more like an EKG letting you know that the patient is still barely hanging on. She it does weird ones though. It goes, it goes beep, 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 beep. Oh, I didn't beep, hear any beep, beep, beep. <laughs> oh, that's terrible, dude. Anyways. Oh, well, let's take the opportunity right now to ask the listeners for a little bit of help. Do you want to tell them what we're going to talk about today and why we're talking about it today instead of last week or the week before or the week before? <laughs> sure. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is Star Wars. The Force Awakens. Why we're not talking about this last week? Well, because it's today. No, no, we did oh, talk about it last we, week. Yes, we did talk about it last week. And once again, we blew it. Um, I think we mentioned in the last That Gets My Goat, th there's some kind of mysterious force out there that is conspiring to end the show. It wants us to become so frustrated that we give up this damn podcasting crap. Because, yeah, what, with The Good Dinosaur... This is your Zoom that's going out, right? With the good dinosaur. Started, With good dinosaur, it was mine that had this horrible, horrible sound. Started adding demonic, scratching, hissing noises into the uh, audio just for fun. No rhyme or reason that we can figure out behind it. Just screeching and hissing, and sometimes it's just quiet and right at the edge. Going, zap, 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 zap. Yeah, I heard it say something. I don't know what it means. It said, I am legion, for we are one in many. And I, I, I have no idea what that could mean. It was just, yeah, really. Yeah, it was. It's, it's does, and then at some points it just gets mad and starts screeching. And what we had to do was re-record, which was really kind of fun to do, to tell you the truth. We had never done that before. <laughs> we took the recording with the static and played it and then tried to say the same stuff over again. I think it turned out all right. It was uh, it was interesting. Yeah, I mean, it only took an extra three hours <laughs> to do that part and to edit it down and to splice it in. But yes, for about nine minutes or 11 minutes, the sound becomes really, really good during that podcast, which is weird because it's the same recorder that I recorded on. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's I, very frustrating. But anyway, that was Good that, Dinosaur. Yeah, and then... Our next movie that we were going to talk about was Star Wars Force Awakens. So last week we did that. We used your device this we time. We used mine and we managed to uh, hit the wrong button and didn't get it recorded. And so now here we are again trying to record the same episode that we did a little while ago. Now what we were just talking about at the start, my recorder only records on one channel. And the other channel? The other channel is Pong that we were just referring to. On, on the left channel, uh, it's just some kind of odd electronic sounding feedbacky, staticky thing. So anything that I record on my Zoom has to be right channel only. Was yours doing that as well at one point? It did. It did start doing that. But now when that happens, when the god awful sound starts, it spills over into the second channel as well. It's just not as loud, but it's still loud enough to ruin any recording that I do, you know, for an audiobook or whatever. And sadly, yes, I've left it in on a couple of our podcasts because it's like, wow, I, I just don't want to do it again. It's no fun to do these things again. Yeah. And if you had to guess how many episodes of both the Dune Steve and That Gets My Go and Journey Into delusions of grandeur we've had to do over again because of a problem like that because of technical issues or it's... because the battery died or because it ran out, my zoom ran out of space or because one of us forgot to pay... turn on the mic yeah i would say it's upward of 30 can you guys think imagine that 30 30, 30 episodes, episodes which is probably 40 hours 
which is more than we put out in a year. <laughs> 30 episodes, guys. And so it's just not fair, guys. Like, like you said, the forces are trying to stop us from doing the show anymore. And after you've recorded, we recorded probably two hours. Maybe it was only 90 minutes last week. Um, but, you know, it was a fairly comprehensive, exhaustive conversation about the pros and cons of The Force Awakens and questions we had and what would be interesting if it happens in the next one. And all that's gone. And when we found out that it was gone, it was like, well, F it, man. I don't want to do it again. I don't want to talk about it. Who knows what we said last week? And I don't want to have to constantly search my mind and say, shoot, it. What was it that we said? Oh, shoot, there was something we said about the old guy at the beginning. Ah, oh, what was it? I don't know. I don't know. And, and that makes for not organic podcasting when you're trying to replicate something. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, uh, it's something I'm going to charge us to try and avoid today. We're not going to say, you know, last time we said this. We're just going to pretend like this is the first time and do as well as we can. But what we started off saying we wanted to ask for some help. We're going to start a fundraiser. There's our PayPal account that you guys can donate to. Tell, tell them what the PayPal account is, if you don't mind. There's the PayPal account. You can go to the website and click the little buttons. There's the, you can hit the $5 a month, the $5 a quarter to subscribe and continuously give five bucks or... You can make a one-time donation. There's a button for that. and Or you can just go to your PayPal and make a donation. It's editor at doonsteef.com is the uh, email address that it would go to. And yeah, we would just like to be able to replace these two Zoom recorders that we have. Yeah, Abigail Hilton the other day, she took me to task that I've been using this Zoom to do audiobooks. She's like, those were never intended to be what professionals use to create audio. They're portable microphones that you take to do interviews or you take to conferences or something. So you just have it's a little thing. It's like the little mini tape recorders that people used to have. And yet you're using it for recording audiobooks for Audible. I was like, oh, okay. Was I not supposed to do that? See, so yeah, when this thing first came, I was so pleased with it I, I i loved it i was like wow this thing is great it does everything that a, a wife should do <laughs> and it, yeah then it sort of stopped doing that the honeymoon was over but it i still pre would prefer to use the zoom over anything if if i had a brand new zoom i would continue to use it for all those purposes it was not made for <laughs> just like a wife and i would be happy you know <laughs> Yeah, it's... As long as that dang static is gone. It's real, If it works correctly, they are amazing, and I love them. And they're not expensive, so it's not... Uh, we're not asking for a, a bunch. But uh, if you have some change you can toss our way, we'd really appreciate it. Because, uh, yeah, our equipment has just deteriorated. I don't know how old these are, but they're several years old. And, uh, yeah, they're starting to break down. I guess we use them... It's not Enough. the years, it's the mileage. Ah. So, yeah, if you can see it in your heart, we would love that. We'd like to be able to, uh, if we didn't have to redo everything that we did twice, we would have twice as much stuff on the dang feed for you to listen to. So it would make a big difference, I think, in our productivity, too. So if you're interested, if you love the Dune Steef, toss us uh, a few shekels. And we will put them to good use. That's right. And another thing that we're going, that I'll just get out of the way right now is I'm going to try and split this up. I don't think we've ever done this before, but I'm going to try and split the Star Wars episode into three. Ooh. Because if we talk as long or close to as long as we did last week. It's going to need to be three. It's a lot of stuff. And if I break it into three, if, that's why I usually break these into two. It's not that I'm lazy and I want to put out more content for for you know <laughs> if we had a patreon account we would get paid for each episode that we put out and maybe we should do a patreon i don't know but when i split them in two it's just so that we can get an episode out there because you know i'm, I'm halfway done it's going to take me another week and a half before i finish this why not just cut it off right here and then we can put it out right now in a week and a half from now we'll have another episode so that's my plan on this is we're going to split it into three where we talk about The Force Awakens, but 
Well, Starting right now, spoilers, go see the friggin' movie. It passed Avatar as the biggest movie of all time. So a lot of people have seen it. If you haven't seen it, then you, you're the one guy who hasn't seen it. You're the one, the one guy who hasn't watched Star Trek at the Star Trek convention. <laughs> um, yeah, you're in the wrong place if you're, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen it. You're the, you're the one guy in Mississippi who doesn't love Waylon Jennings, essentially. <laughs> So. That's right. Just hit pause and go see the movie and then come back to us. We'll be, we'll be here. We'll be waiting for you. All right, so today we're going to talk Star Wars The Force Awakens. Um, I'm going to see if we can actually divide the three parts up in a good way. <laughs> In an organic way, you mean? Yeah, in a okay. way where the, 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 when we cut it off, it seems like where we should. And then we move on to the next part of our conversation. Here, we're, here's we're my suggestion. We don't do that. You just drink some Dr. Pepper right now. And when you need to go to the bathroom, we'll be like, <laughs> okay, that's it for this one. <laughs> but that's going to be about five minutes from now, though. Ah, uh, okay. I can't hold my liquor. He can't. I don't get it. Your <laughs> bladder is basically the size of a, I don't know, a, a, a cherry a cherry blossom, a Nina cherry, an eagle eye cherry. Relatively large, actually. Eagle eye cherry is like a six foot dude. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Take, uh, let, let, let's. Uh, but BB-8, <laughs> cut all that out, would you? <laughs> okay. So to start with, let's talk about lead-in. Let's talk about the experience, the phenomenon, the pop culture experience that was seeing this movie i didn't see it until let's see five or six days after it came out when did, did you you didn't see it like the weekend of or the i night saw of? it on friday okay but if you were a diehard star wars fan you could have seen it thursday night you can see don't they do it like thursday night at like nine or seven or something yeah now? i think they start they call friday seven o'clock on thursday night now uh, it's just been an industry shift because of the Dark Knight Rises thing. Uh-huh. Where they, they feel like, well, nobody would ever shoot up a movie theater at 7 p.m. It's because it was 12 o'clock. It's one of those, you know, right. you wouldn't have been raped if you hadn't been wearing that skirt. It's the witch. Thing. Once the witching hour comes that people, it's, that's what it is. You're not responsible for your own actions. Uh, anyway. <laughs> but I could have gone to it, I guess, if I'd been willing to buy the tickets, you know, two months in advance and all that. The thing is... My schedule, my life is not that open. Right. You know, I don't know when I'm working and when I'm not or when I'll be busy or who's going to be in town or, you know what I mean? These people that were able to say, well, okay, we need 11 tickets for December 19th and we're getting them September 8th. Um, it's like, how would you know you need 11 <laughs> tickets? I, what, what? And on top of that, you wouldn't want to see it on Thursday night because the people that are going to see it on Thursday night are... Often, we'll just say younger than 20. Okay. And so they're the kind of people who are there to, they're not just there to see the movie, they're also there to have a really uh, rambunctiously good time. Okay, that's fair. So I thought gonna you were going to loud. say. Go ahead. Oh, no, I thought you were going to say, you know, the people that are there Thursday night are the real diehard Star Wars fans. And that's totally We don't want you. that. Yeah, we don't want somebody who could talk for five hours straight about Star Wars. Yeah, that's not Or you. have his own podcast about it. So you don't want to be there. No, yeah, um, it's going to be the annoying people. The people who will text. Uh, they'll answer their phone if their phone rings during the movie. They will yell things at the screen. They will, you know, I mean, it's one thing to do that when you're going to see... Friday the 13th, part one, on Halloween night at the Revival Theater, because that's kind of what it's for. Or if you're going to see... You're going to see The Room. Yes, that's the one where you throw the spoons. No, that's Rocky Horror. Oh, what do you... What's the... There's something in the background. Isn't it The Room where they have... Maybe there's there's spoons in The Room. I don't know. They have, like, You pictures. throw rice and you... You're supposed to throw... They have, like, on the back... On the walls in the in the movie, they have all these p 
pictures. It's like pictures are all of spoons. And so you're supposed to bring a bunch of spoons. And then whenever <laughs> there's a picture in the background of spoons, you're supposed to throw them. Oh, that's messed up. I, I is the room like... as the Yue Bowl or whatever? Is What's the really... Is it, is it him? It's not Yui Bowl. Um, it's another but really But it's you tearing me apart, Lisa. Yes, that one. It's, uh, I didn't do it. I, she said I hit her. That's bullshit. I never did. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> that's, that's the room, yeah. His name's Tommy Wiseau. Okay, yeah. There's something that you're supposed to throw. Maybe it's not spoons. So yeah. spoons you throw at Rocky Horror Picture Show? No, I just I, I knew, thought you meant like the rice that you're supposed to throw at the wedding scene. The oh, okay. And stuff. Yeah, no, it's spoons. I'm pretty sure it is spoons then. Okay, well, I learned something new every day. I, I, I've never seen I learned actually that all from somebody else. I've never seen it room, either. But we should go. I wish... <laughs> I know that they, it got re-released for its, like, 10th anniversary or whatever. <laughs> and that would have been a blast to go to. Except for... What if it's, like, super, super boring except for the three or four lines that, every, that it's famous for? You know what I mean? It's no fun to see. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could be could be like never ending story where you're just like oh whoa. this is not it, it could be no, like no, plan... come on man i know it's better than never ending story <laughs> it could be like plan nine from outer space where it's got some things in there which are ridiculously bad but i've never been able to make it through a wake that's right you always fall asleep whenever i put on plan nine and then i have my way with you uh you shouldn't have been wearing that skirt Oh, um, didn't. Sorry, guys. I know we weren't going to talk about that kind of okay, thing. Okay, so we're going to talk about the experience. So you saw oh, it on right, Friday, right. which is I saw it on day. Friday. But see, I had to work. I had to be at work at 5.45 that morning, Friday. Lovely. Which to me is just, just terrible. I'm not a morning person. But to be honest, if I had to be at work at 9.45, it's the same to me. It's just it, mornings are terrible uh, no matter what hour of the morning it is one time you became angry at me when i suggested such a thing what that you weren't a morning person oh no i i I think that it was morning time when i said it to you though so i think i could have just said like you're the coolest guy i know and you would have become angry yes well there was a time when you're just like (laughs) if you really wanted if you wanted to show your dedication to this podcast we could meet before I go to work in the morning. And I was just like, <laughs> F the podcast and F you. Do you remember that? Yeah, uh, I, you've said that many times, actually. So, But anyhow, I went to work that earlier that morning, and there were 20-somethings that were at work with me who had gone to see the movie the night before. And I was, part of me was just like, oh, tell me all about it. Tell me about the score. Tell me about C-3PO with his red arm. But the other part was like, no, 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 don't tell any, don't say anything. Don't even tell me if it was good. Don't tell me if even John Williams did the score, which I know he did. <laughs> and so, yeah, don't that tell was... tell me who the lead actors were because, wait, I already know them all. But, yeah, I was working fairly closely with this guy who'd seen it. He and his wife had gone to see it the night before. And I just kept wanting to, okay, just answer me this one thing. And then I'd be like, oh, no, no, never mind. Forget I ever said that. But, yeah, the only way I was able to make it to the movie was a couple of days before it came out our local theater opened two new showings or added two new screenings, as they say. And so I told my cousin, or maybe he told me, you know, hey, they just added two more screenings. We could probably go. What time do you get off work? And so I ran over there and I bought them. And theater, the guy, the usher, what do you call the guy that sells you the tickets? The cashier? Probably. That guy didn't even know that they had added more screenings he just said no no that's been sold out since you know first of november i was like will you check again please and it's like <laughs> i don't have to check again that's been i was like you will check again and uh he waved he his did. hand by the way just right there i did i well, that was that was a jedi mind trick he pulled on this guy that's how good he you is. don't have to see you were more like uh, my student id and anyhow he checked and he's like wow there's there, we've only sold four tickets to this whole screening. Right? Well, okay, where do you want to sit? So I was able to get tickets, and I think it was 4.50 p.m. that afternoon, and I was scheduled to get off at 4. And you know me, I'm never out of, on time. You know, it's just, I, I work with millennials, and they don't show up to work on time if they show up at all. And so uh, I was just like, oh, shoot, I, I got to tell the boss... I absolutely have to be out of here at four today so I can go to this movie. And, and, and so as the day went on, and it was a long shift, dude, I, 
Six o'clock until 4 p.m. is a long shift, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's long. But, you know, as, the, as it got closer and closer, I started getting really excited. And people came in to work who had seen the movie. And it's like, oh, i got to tell you all about it. Lando does. And was, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Please don't tell me. So it was five minutes to four. And my relief still hadn't gotten there. And I was like, okay, he's not going to get here. Well, shoot, I don't know how I'm going to manage this. I'm going to try. But, uh... And over the intercom, the HR lady's voice said, uh, basically said, attention, Rish, you have five minutes to leave the building or you are fired. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh. And people looked around me and there's like, did I hear that right? What, what did you do? And I thought it was hilarious that she did that. She's like, I would be fired if I didn't leave immediately. And I thought that that was really, really cool. They told me I had to go. That's funny. And so I was able to get out. I wasn't able to go home and change or anything like that. I went straight to, to the theater from work. And we saw the movie. Straight to the theater. In your <laughs> How dare you? You cut that out, damn you. <laughs> you can cut it out. That was a joke just for you. But you, you were in California. I mean, you had chosen this uh, inconvenient weekend to go to California. But, and you knew that you wouldn't be able to see Star Wars. So. Yeah, I was pretty sure it wasn't going to happen because we were leaving Saturday morning. Yeah, I mean, Thursday and Friday, everything was basically sold out. So I was going to have to see it later. But the, I mean, I was going on vacation, so I had time to see it. It wasn't going to be the day that we drove down there. Or any of that, but you know, it worked out really well for us because we went to San Diego. You know, obviously, you go to San Diego, you're there because you want to go to the beach, you want to, you know, experience that kind of stuff. But when you go to San Diego in December, you might get that, you might not. And it turned out that one of the days was just raining the whole day, so we had to find something to do indoors. We weren't going to just be hanging out on the beach in the rain because that really would suck. And so we chose that as our day to go to Star Wars. So it worked out well for us. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, I remember getting really geeked up. Uh, bef up until that point, I, I, I don't know how much I worked at it. But I mean, I, I tried my best to not get swept up in all the stuff. To stay away from the internet. To stay away from any possible spoilers. And also, I knew I had to wait. I wasn't going to see it the day it came out, or the day after, or the day after, or the day after that. So it was going to be hard if I was super, super, super excited about it. And on top of that, you know, the last Star Wars stuff we've had was the prequels. And so I was still wary. I, I still had the fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me kind of thing running through my head. You know, yeah, they were bad. And so... If I go and see this and it's worse, which I guess isn't, isn't probably even possible, but as bad, then I would be really upset. And so I tried to not get too excited about it. But hey, when the day arrived, yeah, I started to get really geeked up and I started posting, oh yeah, I'm finally going to see Star Wars on Facebook. And You took oh a picture gosh. of you in front of the poster and posted yeah. it. And I, I was like, wow, I should have thought to do that. Posting about, because what, what, I don't know why this still exists. You would think in California would be the, fir the first place that it went. But the theater that we went to see it at was somewhat old. They didn't have assigned seating yet. Oh, really? Yeah, you had to buy a ticket and then just see what you could get. And when we got there to watch the movie, they, they were showing it on three screens and it was kind of like 20 to 30 minutes between each showing. So it was like, you know, 11.20, 11.50 and 12.20, right? Well, we happened to get there at like 12.15. <laughs> okay, so five minutes before the last show. Five minutes starts. before the last showing starts and we're like, yeah, we need tickets to Star Wars and they're like uh, I, I can't get you any tickets together they're going to be all separate did you buy them in October? <laughs> and I went uh, uh, okay can we get the next one which I assumed was going to be 20 minutes later I didn't really take a close look I could just see that they were doing it at like every half hour and they're like yeah sure that one's at 2.15 so it's like an hour and like 30 minutes away <laughs> And I'm like, okay, uh, and 
and then I discovered that there's no assigned seating. So not only is it an hour and a half away, but we also have to stand in line so that we can be sure that we get a good seat. But why did he say then that the, that the 1220, the seats weren't together? Yeah, that did kind of confuse me. He just, he said that it was like, you know, I don't know how they work it out, but it's like it's 97% sold out or whatever. So whatever you get in there and get, you're going to be all over the theater and you're going to be in the bottom left corner, etc. So yeah, so we bought the tickets that were for that next show, which was the first in the uh, three uh, theaters that were showing it. And they're like, yeah, the line's here against the wall. And so, yeah, we stood in line and stood and stood. And it was interesting because some people started coming in after us. And it totally took me back to when I went to see Phantom Menace. Back, that was back before they anywhere had assigned seating. And all these people were in the line and they all had lightsabers and all that crazy. You remember how awesome that was and how fun that was before it all came crumbling down? <laughs> there weren't a lot of people dressed up at Phantom Menace, I didn't think. Suddenly everybody had a lightsaber and everybody had a costume, right? Or, or am I thinking of the special editions? I think you might be thinking of the special editions because the special editions came out just a little bit before Phantom Menace did. And so there was that. I mean, that was cool too. They just... People camped out for that and, you know, waited in line and uh, all that. It, it's just a kind of a, you know, it's like when you go to a nerd convention, a geek together. Um, <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Who came up with that? <laughs> I don't know. And uh, you, you're there with all these people that are, you know, they share kind of the same interest as you and you can talk to them about stuff. It, it's just kind of interesting to be there among people that are strangers but also not. And the sad thing is that was only fun for like maybe the first 20 minutes. And then that kind of wore off and then there was still an hour and 10 minutes to wait. <laughs> where we stood there and saw, yeah, I took a picture of us in the line and, and I posted another thing on Facebook. And Plus you have a crap load of kids. Yeah, I mean, that so. could have been bad, but... Oh, it's bad. We were, <laughs> we were in... Uh, you know, it was part of a shopping center, and so my wife just took the un more unruly kids, and they went out and looked at stuff. Oh, all right. Just the older, quieter ones stayed with me in line, and of course, they just sat on their phones and texted all the time or whatever. But <laughs> which they did throughout the movies. So. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was just a, it was a neat experience to get caught up in something like that that seemed to have been gone forever. Um, and there I was in line again. But yeah, I mean, eventually the line ended, or the, the time ended, I guess. And uh, we were able to get in there, and I was the first person in line, so I got to choose my own seat. And yeah, then the credits, the, the title began rolling, and I remember somebody saying on Facebook that, yeah, when that, when that music starts and the, and the crawl starts going up, you'll, you'll be eight years old again. You'll see. Well, did you find that not having the Fox fanfare made it feel strong, uh, strange or too abrupt when Star Wars began? For so long, we've been used to the choo choo, choo choo, choo choo, and you know, the whole expanded cinemascope part of the fanfare <laughs> that plays over like the Lucasfilm logo and all that stuff. And to just have Lucasfilm and, and then... I don't know, uh, Lucasfilm was totally silent. I don't think it had anything to it. It just was there and then... Was there a Disney? No. There was, it was they just Lucasfilm. They didn't have Disney huh? at all. Nope, it was just... Yeah, which it, was surprising, but it, that's how it worked. It was a little weird. I mean, that Fox fanfare became such a part of it that it was included in the special edition soundtracks. Really? Track one is the freaking Fox fanfare. <laughs> so it, it really is part of it. If they put it on the dang soundtrack, um, you actually get that before you get the bomb. Ba -da -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. So it was a little weird. It did seem kind of abrupt or something. I don't know what I expected to take its place. Bad robot. <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't get any of those production company ro uh, logos, which I think is nice. 
Um, yeah, sometimes it's laughable how many of those you'll see. <laughs> it depends on what the movie is and what their you know contractual agreement is. Is you know I got I have to get my logo at the beginning, but yeah, you'll see four or five or six of those dang things before the movie begins. And to just see Lucasfilm and then a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away felt like the opposite, where it's like, whoa, whoa, what am I missing? Mm -hmm. But uh, I was so tired that uh, it was a really emotional experience for me. And I, I don't think I cried when I saw a long time ago or when the music started or whatever. But early, early on, with like Ray by herself, she's like washing out some kind of bit of junk that she scavenged. And she looks over... And there's like this old, old woman. You know, she might have been 30, this old woman. <laughs> and she's doing the same thing. And yet without any dialogue, you just, you know what's going through Ray's head. And I, that was the first time I just, I, I started to cry. <laughs> but I cried virtually through this whole damned thing. And my cousin kept looking over at me and he's like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, it's really sad. And he's like, no, no, it's not. Uh, there's something wrong. You know, you need a psychiatrist. And. And that's funny because then I saw, I have seen the movie again. Since you and I recorded the last time when, uh -huh. when we both said, well, we've only seen it once, but I hope that when I see it again, I notice this and this and this. I have seen it again. And yeah, there were a couple of moments that I think were pretty emotional in the movie, but nothing like the first time <laughs> I saw it where I'm just like, oh, BB-8 is so alive. <laughs> you were a broken man at that point and... Anything that ha oh my gosh, the leaf fell off that tree. <laughs> it's not even red yet, it's still green. There were two moments in the movie <laughs> where I went, oh, I actually made that weird noise. And the first <laughs> is, Ray is like eating her slop, whatever this, this food oh, thing uh -huh. is. And she's sitting in like the shadow of like some wreckage or whatever. And the camera pulls back or, or suddenly it's a, a, a wide shot. And it's a downed ad at that she's sitting in the shadow of its foot. Uh -huh. And the first time I saw that, I went, ah! And you shat yourself. And, well, I didn't quite get that bad. But the second time, when it's <laughs> like, that is garbage. Let's go to this ship or whatever. It's okay, the garbage will do. And I don't know how the exact line goes. Yeah, something like that. And then we see that the garbage is the Millennium Falcon. That's the second time when I went, ah! It was just so perfectly done, that setup and that delivery, that surprise or whatever. Oh, my gosh, it was great that I made that noise. And, yes, I, a, a little poo did come out. But it was just like <laughs> rabbit pellet-sized poo. It wasn't just a, a full-on... <laughs> oh, sorry, I forget that this. That came later, but we're not going to tell you because that would be a spoiler. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Can you imagine a movie that makes you defecate? That? Why would anybody go see that? A second time. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I thought it was an emotional experience, and I wondered, do you were you were you moved at any point in the film? Uh, I don't know what it is. I I was not. I was on vacation, so I hadn't been put through a twelve-hour shift, um, and put through the ringer and and all that kind of stuff. I was just like relaxing, so I was in a good state of mind. Not a very, very vulnerable state of mind <laughs> okay. when I went to see the movie. And I don't know what it is. I think it may just be that I'm old, which makes me kind of sad. It's like you were telling me the story of a guy the other day who, and I, I'm, I want to say this happened to you like 10 years ago or something, where this young kid... You you said something about the Matrix movies not being really good, and this kid was, like, really, really hurt. It hurt his feelings. He said, those are probably the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Like, you know, it's like, how can you say that about my mom? Kind of thing. You know what I mean? He took it so personally, and he didn't get angry. It wasn't the self-righteousness of some person that's trying to convince me that Man of Steel isn't a steaming turd. But it was somebody who was just like, this is really important to me, and... And you just made fun of it, and that hurts, kind of thing. And I was just like, whoa. I actually felt bad for impugning the Matrix sequels <laughs> because of this kid, this 18-year-old, or however old he would have been, who, you know, is now 50. Right. I used to be that kid with Star Wars. Those were the greatest things that I'd ever seen, and no one could say something bad about them. Nobody did, really. Everybody else loved them, too. And I never met anybody until I was older. Like, I had to be at least 
as uh, probably older than that kid before I met the first person who was just like, no, I'm just not really interested in stuff. I, I, I tried to watch it once, but it was, I just couldn't get into it. I didn't watch it. These people who had never seen it. And, and then there was those people who would be like proud, like, oh, I've never seen it. I'm better than you because I didn't. I don't know why, but it's that makes me better than you. Chris Rock saying, I ain't never been to jail. I take care of my kids. And you're like, wait, that you're proud of never having seen Star Wars? Sorry. Yeah, it was just, I never met anybody like that until I was pretty old. Anyone who would not just be like, oh yeah, Star Wars is the greatest thing ever. So. <laughs> okay. So, and you don't feel that way anymore. But yeah, I, 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 I think it's just got to do with the prequels and how much they've dragged it through the dirt and how, you know, it's like that thing that you showed me uh, just a little bit before Star Wars came out. It was, there's something about Star Wars. <laughs> and they had made this romantic comedy about these two people and the girl was named Star Wars. <laughs> And the guy was named Fanboy, and they had once been such this perfect couple, but then something happened with Star Wars, and she went kind of crazy, and she hurt Fanboy really bad. And now Star Wars is suddenly back in his life again, and he's afraid. He's afraid to really go headlong into this relationship again because of what Star Wars did to him before. It's, it's a funny little, I, I'll try and remember to attach the uh, link to that video, because I thought it was really humorous. But anyways, that was me. I, was, I, I guess I was just too afraid to really invest in it all the way. I, I, maybe I need to go see it again. Maybe I should be like you and, I don't know, like stay up all night the night before so I'm really vulnerable and easily, you know, brought to an emotional... So it's not that you're old... It's just this, it's Star Wars' fault. Because I remember what was the one, there was a Pixar movie where you and I went and the animated short at the beginning of the movie blew us away where we're just like, <laughs> and there was some lady like four rows ahead who's like, can you please take your child out of the theater? Please, it's inconsiderate to the rest of us. And it was two, you know, middle-aged guys that were making that noise. <laughs> Do you remember that? Which one I'm was that? I'm trying to remember which one that was. Was it the cloud one? I think it was. The cloud with the... Uh, anyway, he was making these, yeah, these cloud the baby, shapes. and It would make the baby scary animals and, and the poor stork that had to deliver. The stork, that's what it was. The baby oh. animals that were like an alligator baby or a ram baby that would totally headbutt him as soon as he went to pick him up. And dude, we were bawling. <laughs> so, yeah, like I mean, unabashedly I bawling. And I'll bet it was like Up or something. One of those movies that's already moving. Oh, yeah, Up. It was Up or Wally or something like that, where we bawled through that animated short. And then, you know, there was more bawling. Oh, to yeah. If, you, if, if that was the animated short before Up, dude, I would have been a wreck <laughs> before the story even started because Up starts with that whole big montage that's the life of Mr. Fredrickson. Was it Fredrickson? Was it? Or, that... or maybe he was Fred and I don't remember. Anyways, whatever the damn guy's name was. His whole freaking heartbreaking life story, like 10 minutes into that, you're, oh, basically you've been bombed for five minutes at least by the time you get through that. So, yeah, that would be rough. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's because I'm old. No, I'm so... saying it's not because you're old. Because the, the, the Pixar thing could still move the crap out of you. Not, And I'm sorry about the scatological conversation. It didn't <laughs> literally move the crap out of him. <laughs> not like that one movie not, yeah. that nobody saw a second time. But, I'm yeah, it, just, it surprises me that you weren't moved at all. Because yeah, it's... It, there were some really intense moments that should have been really emotional to me. And, you know, I, I would say one that would probably really have moved me a lot is when, you know, Chewie and Han walk into the Millennium Falcon and say, hey, we're home. But you knew that was coming. But you knew it was coming. I mean, you didn't know when it was coming, 
but you knew it was coming. It's one of those things where, like, it's such a great moment, but it was spoiled because you already saw it in the trailer. And we've talked about that. There's not a lot of moments like that for Force Awakens, though. Yeah, that's true. They really picked and chose what we could see. And, yeah, I know we're probably winding down on this very first episode, but Marshall Latham, about a month before the movie came out, maybe it was, like, December 1st or something, said, that's it, I'm done with Facebook. I'm not going to be on Facebook anymore because I'm afraid that somebody's going to do a Star Wars spoiler. Somebody's going to spoil Star Wars for me. And uh, he didn't, re he needn't have worried. I, I never saw a single Star Wars yeah, spoiler on Facebook. Even after the movie came out, people would be like, saw Fa Force Awakens, thought it was pretty good. No spoilers here, but feel free to put spoilers in the comments. Spoiler warning! And I was just like, wow, you guys yeah. are considerate. You're all right. I've never seen people be this measured and controlled and decent on Facebook. Facebook's not made for... The internet is not made for that. <laughs> it broke the internet worse than the last time that Kim Kardashian was naked. Yeah, I guess that's, that's true. Because it broke it in a completely different way. But uh, <laughs> a lot of that was by design. You know, J.J. only released little hints and bits and... People didn't even know what the plot of the movie was. I mean, you could sort of guess, but then when you saw the movie, you'd be like, oh, whoops. But, I've got a but, I know that right before the movie really came out... big one. I don't know, not Kim Kardashian, but you yeah, know. Yeah, you wouldn't break the internet, but... No. But, but right before the movie came out, they started putting out TV spots. And I don't know if Lucasfilm controlled those as tightly as they controlled the, uh, the trailers, but... People were saying, hey, there's, you know, oh, this showed up in a TV spot. No, oh, there's this in a TV spot. And so I'd be like, ooh, well, I'm not going to watch any. And I didn't watch a single dang one. But just two days ago, my cousin came over, and he hadn't come over since before Christmas. And we had a DVR'd episode of The Flash that we watched together. And it had a Star Wars TV spot in it. And we watched it, and oh my gosh, it gave up so much stuff. And it this was before... Uh -huh, before Force came Awakens out. came out, and it showed Finn fight that stormtrooper with the, the force field making shield thing uh -huh. with his lightsaber and stuff. And it showed it showed Han like pick up the crossbow and shoot a stormtrooper with it or whatever, and say, Oh, yeah, I like this thing or whatever. That I got to get me one of these. Oh, that's what he said. Weird that it didn't bother me the first time. <laughs> it sure bothers me now. But anyway, I was just really glad that I hadn't seen that. Not because it gives away anything huge, but just because, yeah, there are these little moments that are kind of neat. And, the, and yes, Han saying, Chewie, we're home. I See, I, I, I don't know. You'd have to tell me whether you feel like seeing that in February or whenever we saw it in that second trailer and the emotion you got from that is worth having it spoiled for, you know, December 19th. Hmm. Yeah, that's hard to say. I think... That it probably was worth it. I think it was wise. Although it may, I mean, I know it's almost like it's the fan service moment or whatever. It may still be my favorite moment of the movie, even though I'd seen it in the trailer beforehand. Well, that, that trailer, the one that ends with that line, is the perfect trailer. And I remember you telling me that Guardians of the Galaxy was the perfect trailer and I was like, yeah, well, yeah. but so every time I'd go to the theater and I'd see that, I'd be like, wow, he's right. And I, I remember telling you that, that that Chewy Were Home trailer was the perfect trailer. And I saw it again yesterday. I went to the Dollar Theater and it played again. And I was just like, oh, suddenly all these images meant something because I'd seen the movie. <laughs> it just, yeah, it ends with sort of silence and darkness. And then you hear... Han say Chewie and then the, it comes up and you see Han and Chewie and he goes we're home and then the, the release date comes up and whoever created that deserves an award I, I want to hire that person to edit my movie because yeah it was just so skillfully done but it yeah it, it, I guess it took away the surprise of Han and Chewie coming in and him saying that it didn't take away the surprise. I mean, you still are wondering what the hell the context is to that. Why would he say Chewie were home? And it finally makes sense when you actually see it happen. But um, anyways, 
Is there anything more you think we need to talk about in this episode? We'll, I think we'll get into the meat of the actual movie itself. Maybe we'll do one of like pros and one of cons or something like that. Okay, that's fair. Uh, yeah, let's, let's call this uh, the first episode and I'll try and get this out as soon as possible. But you know, hey, if I don't, still donate to the show, man. Just, <laughs> just, we've given you shows for free for so long, you owe us a, a something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A reach around. At least. Okay. Let's just, we're just gonna go ahead and hit stop before you go any further. Are you a great big sl? That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives license. That means you can copy it, share it, and make paper dolls out of it, but you can't sell it or use it in your little voodoo rituals. I'm talking to you, sir. And remember, sand people travel single file to hide their numbers. We probably already know this.